Maintenance in the workshop. Some attention to my old boxwood lathe which is well overdue. But first I need to fit a new camera mounting. This is a Manfrotto video head for a tripod. Currently I have three of these and I do find them very good. When the camera's in the workshop I don't do much live tilting and panning of the camera and this one is going to be mounted above the lathe. This was a metric bolt and I chopped the head off it using my bandsaw. Then I turned and threaded the other end 3 8 Whitworth. Once I tightened it in place, it's ready to go. I propose to mount the camera head as shown. I found an old plastic disc, drilled a hole in the middle of it, and that lifts the video head clear of the shelf. All I then needed to do was tighten the nut underneath to hold everything in place. But there is a problem, the camera's not in the right position, which is quite obvious. The solution was simple, I just moved my mounting bracket to the other side of the shelf bracket. And now the view is like this, and it's really good at not having a large tripod which has always been in my way. This viewing angle isn't perfect, but it will allow me to show with great clarity what I'm doing. Now it's time to get on with some essential maintenance. And the first thing I'm going to do is unplug the lathe from the mains. And just to check that I've unplugged the correct plug, I'm rotating the reversing switch on the front of the lathe. Here I'm unscrewing the lever that operates the back gear because I need clear access into the headstock. I need to remove the four countersunk bolts that hold the inspection cover in place. You may be wondering why do I need to go inside the headstock? Well the reason is that one of the belts, the main one that drives the headstock, is slipping badly. This has only started recently and it's nothing to do with the problem I had with the three-phase converter I think the belt is contaminated with oil and grease. I thought I would take this opportunity to show you how the back gear works. Before I can do anything, I need to go inside the little cupboard on the front of the lathe. Now I'm laid on the floor and I'm holding the camera inside the small cupboard. Here you can see the belt that drives the headstock and it looks a bit greasy. It's one of those special segmented belts, which allows you to take links out or add links I suppose. But it's really like this, so you don't have to dismantle the lathe much to fit a new belt. As I move the camera downwards, you can see both of the counter shafts. The top one, and here's the bottom one, and the bottom one connects to the motor. I slip the segmented belt off the pulley inside the cupboard. Now I can get a closer look at it to see what the problem is. And yes, there's some grease on the pulley itself. I think I know what the problem is. The problem is me. When I was fixing the three-phase converter, I repacked the lubricating cups on the front of the headstock with some new grease. And I think I packed the cups too many times. Once is sufficient, three times is excessive. And some of the grease has found its way onto this pulley. Solution, I need to clean it off. First of all, I wiped the belt with a cloth. You can't see this because it was impossible to video it. It involved me laying on the floor again with my arms up inside the cupboard with a cloth to wipe the belt. Once I did that, I thought I'm going to try and degrease the belt. I plug the lathe back into the wall socket, and here it is running. What am I doing at the moment? I'm applying some cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner to the belt. First of all, with a brush, and then pouring some of it onto the belt. In this part of the clip, the lathe is in back gear, as you can see, and I'm also cleaning up the shaft of the back gear. A health and safety warning, this is an extremely dangerous thing to do. But at the moment it's only dangerous for the paintbrush. I'm not going to put my hands anywhere near this hole in the top of the headstock. Also, I'm wearing eye protection because I don't want to get splashed in the face with this cellulose thinners. And in case you're wondering why it's a funny colour, that's because the small plastic cap that I used had previously had some cellulose paint in it. And the cellulose thinners obviously dissolve this paint, but this is not a problem. My logic says I use cellulose thinners as a degreaser and it works very well. So it should also degrease this belt. And here I'm pouring another cap full of cellulose thinners onto the drive belt which is looking much cleaner all the time. Time for a test cut. And yes, it's working perfectly now. It's not slowing down, the belt isn't slipping, everything's okay. Another health and safety warning, I opened the doors and windows in the workshop because the smell of cellulose thinners now is quite strong. It's also worth mentioning that after I applied the cellulose thinners to the belt, I left the doors and windows open and I went into the house to have my lunch. 
After I got back, there was a faint smell, but nothing too strong. By this time, I'd replaced the top cover in the headstock because I don't want any swarf to get in there. And as you can see, look at the depth of cut. There's no faking here. This is a very deep cut for a small, light-duty, 5-inch centre-height lathe. As I've mentioned before, I really would like a bigger lathe, but the purpose of the tutorials is to show beginners how to do things. And this old Boxford lathe works quite well. I have to think outside the box sometimes as to the way I manufacture parts, especially the larger parts as they don't fit in the chuck very well. It's not helped by the fact that I don't have any outside jaws for this chuck. So I really think it's time that I bought a larger chuck for this Boxford lathe. I'll do that shortly. I think I can say with confidence that I've fixed the slippery belt. So now I'll be able to get on and remake this component. It's a piston from a steam locomotive. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.